All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x times 5 to the power of x squared is equal to 15. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting 15 as 3 times 5. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 5x squared, 5 to the power of x squared is equal to 3 times 5. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to the power of x, as well as 5. So then, for my left-hand side, both the 3 to the power of x's cancel out. For my right-hand side, both the 5's cancel out. So now I get 5 to the power of x squared over 5 is equal to 3 over 3 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form 1 over a, this is the same thing as a to the power of negative 1. So 5 to the power of x squared over 5, that's the same thing as 5 to the power of x squared times 5 to the power of negative 1. And now this is equal to 3 times 3 to the power of negative x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So, in this case, I get 5 to the power of x squared minus 1. And now this is equal to 3 to the power of 1 minus x. Now, if I take the log on both sides, I get log 5 to the power of x squared minus 1 is equal to log 3 to the power of 1 minus x. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I get x squared minus 1 times log 5 is equal to 1 minus x times log 3. And now, I'm going to take base 5 on both sides of both logs. So these cancel out to get 1. So now I have x squared minus 1 is equal to 1 minus x times log base 5 of 3. And this means that x squared minus 1 plus x minus 1 times log base 5 of 3 is equal to 0. And this gets me to x minus 1 times x plus 1 plus log base 5 of 3 is equal to 0. Meaning this is one equation, x minus 1 equals 0, meaning x is equal to 1. and If you solve this, you get x is equal to negative log base 5 of 15. All right, so in this problem, I have a to the power of 3 plus a squared is equal to 80. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by subtracting 80 on both sides. So I get a to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 80 is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as a to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 64 minus 16 is equal to 0. So I simply wrote negative 80 as negative 64 minus 16. And now, negative 64, I'm going to rewrite that as negative 4 to the power of 3. So I have a to the power of 3 minus 4 to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 16, I'm going to rewrite as 4 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is going to equal a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, if by using these two properties, I'm going to end up with a minus 4 
times a squared plus 4a plus 16 plus a plus 4 is equal to 0. And this simplifies to a minus 4 times a squared plus 5a plus 20 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I get a minus 4 is equal to 0, and a squared plus 5a plus 20 is equal to 0. So for a minus 4 equals 0, a is obviously equal to 4. And for a squared plus 5a plus 20 equals 0, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, but I'm actually not going to waste your guys' time by actually doing it. So if you do end up doing it, you get that a is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 55i over 2. And the reason, actually what you should get is a equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 55 over 2. And the square root of negative 55, I can rewrite that as the square root of 55 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1 is equal to the magic number i. So if I replace i with the square root of negative 1, I get a is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 55 i over 2. So that's how I got square root of 55 i. All right, so in this problem, we have the square root of 3 to the power of x is equal to 81. Now, to solve this, I'm going to start here with the square root of 3. So let's just ignore everything else for a second and focus on the square root of 3. Now, the square root of a number is say the square root of x, this is the same thing as x to the power of 1 half. Because basically, the root here is 2, but we just don't write that. And the cube root of a number, that's that number to the power of 1 over 3, because we have a 3 over here. So the square root of 3, we can think of 3 as x in this case, and we can rewrite this as 3 to the power of 1 half. So now, if I substitute in 3 to the power of 1 half for square root of 3, I get 3 to the power of 1 half to the power of x is equal to 81. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of 1 half to the power of x, that's going to equal 3 to the power of 1 half times x, which is simply 1 half x, and this is equal to 81. Now, 81, that's the same thing as 3 to the power of 4. So now I have 3 to the power of 1 half x is equal to 3 to the power of 4, and this means 1 half x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 8. So eight is my answer. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation 25 to the power of x minus five to the power of x is equal to 20. So to solve this equation, I'm gonna first start by subtracting 20 on both sides. So then these two cancel out and I get 25 to the power of x minus 5 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. Now 25 to the power of x, I can rewrite this as 5 squared to the power of x. So I have this minus 5 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now from here, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n, I can rewrite as a to the power of n times m. So if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, 
then a to the power of n times m should equal a to the power of n to the power of m. So phi to the power of 2 to the power of x is going to equal phi to the power of x to the power of 2. Now this minus phi to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to let phi to the power of x is e equal to y. So I get y squared minus y minus 20 is equal to 0. Now, to solve this, I'm going to be using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 20. So I get y equals negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 1 squared, which is positive 1 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 20, all over 2a. So 2 times 1. And this is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 80 over 2, which is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 81 over 2. And the square root of 81 is equal to 9. So I get y is equal to 1 plus or minus 9 over 2. Now this gives me two solutions. I get y equals 1 plus 9 over 2 and y equals 1 minus 9 over 2. So 1 plus 9 is 10 and 10 divided by 2 is 5 so I get y equals 5 as one solution and 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 8 over 2 is negative 4 so y equals negative 4 is another solution. Now from here Remember how we let 5 to the power of x equal to y. So this means I get two solutions. 5 to the power of x is equal to 5, and 5 to the power of x is equal to negative 4. So let's look at this equation over here. 5 to the power of x equals negative 4. Well, we can't take the power of a positive number and turn it into a negative number, meaning this equation has no solution. And for 5 to the power of x equals 5, to solve this, what most people do is, well, for other exponential equations, we would have to take the log and do a bunch of other stuff. But as over here, we could just see 5 to the power of 1 is going to equal 5, because anything to the power of 1 is itself. So this is my solution. 